think it's more talking about the boundaries that like you have to have in place. I think boundaries, but it's also the experience. Can't we can't stop don't... love. <laughs> 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 can't stop love. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop it. Welcome to another episode of Co-Founders. This is Alex Montrose, and we have... Lisa Montrose. All righty. So today, we're going to talk about... This topic's really interesting. We'll see where it goes. Um, <laughs> about, is it appropriate for intimate relationships to take place in the work environment. I know, which is interesting for us to touch on as yeah, co-founders I know. and a lot of the people we met with because that's obviously, they either started there or we've talked to people who were in business together or sort of in business together and then they yeah. got together and were a stronger workforce. Like yep. we have one couple I can think of in particular that they didn't start the business really together but now they're leading now it they're in business yeah as it yeah so one one coaching client same thing uh that i that i have right now consulting their business and they um she came into the business like four years in you know because he needed help right so we see a lot of that yeah. but i think it's a little bit different too it's like so i don't think it's about starting a business together it's right. about okay now that we have a business together and you start to get employees you start to even if it's employees or you have a team, whether they're 1099, independent contractors, and so on. What are, what, at what point are you okay with, you know, somebody, a couple, or whatever it is, coming together and finding out that there's now a romantic relationship in the business? Or they're, yeah, they hooked up. Because <laughs> <laughs> as you've said, you can't stop love. You can't stop love. Well, and I actually, I actually think a lot of people you see a lot of relationships start at work. Yeah. You know, that's well, where we you do spend people. the most. You spend a ton of time with them. We spend, like, what is it? Is it a third of our lives at work? I think it's something like that. That would make sense because we spend a third of our lives sleeping. It's supposed to be right? the same. It's, yeah. So like, Some of us do. So we have a third of our lives that are fun time. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think, but that I think a sense. lot of relationships start at work or that's, you ask how people met. Oh, we met at work or we met yeah. through work. Right. Because that's where you are. Yeah. So what do you? So what does a business do, knowing that that is a rea, uh, is real that could happen? What do you do? Like, are you okay with it as a business owner? What I mean, I don't know. Am I personally, or are most yeah, business or do, owners? Yeah, or do people care? People care. Okay, why? Because it's well, the danger is, I think, if there's a relationship at work, and especially, well, it, I mean, it really doesn't matter if there's a boss, employee, you know, manager something relationship there you run into issues there yeah there's because then the co-workers issues. start yeah. thinking there's favoritism yeah, yeah, or yeah. you know yeah. i mean you you can't be in that type of position a lot of big corporations i know don't allow it they don't allow it yeah. um at all because of that issue is you can't lead a team if you're romantically involved with somebody on that team right of course you, know, you just can't um especially if that relationship started after the positions in the hierarchy right. fell into place. So there's that issue. But I think the other issue is what you run into then, what takes precedence, work or the relationship. Mm -hmm. And as an employer, you want your employees to be most productive at work. You want them to also be happy, of course, like you care about their well-being, right. but you don't pay them to be happy, you pay them to get a job done and hopefully <laughs> happiness is a byproduct, right? Like, I mean, that sounds harsh, but it's not. It's, I mean, that's, it's- That's really cold. It's not though. I'm, I'm I mean, kidding. you. I'm kidding. but you hire but someone should, to look, do a it job. Is, it is the, the God honest truth. Like you pay somebody to do a job, not, right. not to, to make them happy. Right, You're, and hopefully yeah. you have a culture yes, that of course. creates happiness of course. and enjoyment in that their job. Sense. But you don't hire them saying, I'm gonna pay you to enjoy your life. Like, I wish someone would do that to me. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if I ever win the lottery. Well, like, no, but you do because, you know, you pay them so that they, they can have financial, the, the right. ability to enjoy the things of life. I so, mean, it's yeah, semantics I mean, yes, but I know, at this I know point. What you mean, yeah. But, so let's say a relationship starts at work and you have someone who, you know, you've, you're paying them, both of them to do a job. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden this relationship starts and productivity goes down because they're passing each other notes at work or they're, you know, meeting in the hallways or whatever is happening. So productivity there goes down, which is an issue. I think the bigger issue is what happens if that relationship doesn't work out? Yeah. Awesome if it does. Great. They have a wonderful story. We met at our job, we got married, we still work together, we love our life. That's a great story. 
the not so great story is, yeah, we started dating. It went south really fast. Found out he was a stalker. Now I have a restraining order against him. <laughs> I mean, this is an extreme, right? <laughs> have a restraining order he can't come to work anymore because <laughs> he's yeah, within because a certain amount feet. of feet um worries That's me awesome. that you know that amount <laughs> no <laughs> is it 100 feet for... i don't know what it is <laughs> um but so we there's that issue feet, though. but the other but the other issue is what if they break up and then you lose an employee because they don't feel like they can work with that other person right. anymore so yeah. you may have had two really great employees and you lose one of them or you lose both yeah so I, I don't know that it's a great idea to allow it, Yeah. but how do you stop it? So I remember years ago, you know, the whole in the restaurant industry, right, is being a kid and, and all that. And it seems like in the restaurant industry, it's more okay. Oh my gosh, the restaurant industry is totally, it's, <laughs> they made a movie about it yeah, because they did it's it. <laughs> like that, like... Yeah, waiting waiting yeah that's such a great which movie. is it i mean i worked i mean it literally it's, is it's every restaurant i've ever worked at is that movie it's it is like, it to some degree it's that movie right yeah. um but uh it seems to be okay in the rest it's weird in the restaurant industry there's no those boundaries aren't as firm at least from my experience they're not as firm um but it did lead to i was in a similar situation did lead to um in essence both people losing i, I eventually lost my job she lost her job and they lost two employees. Right. You know what I mean? And it wasn't anything because of that, but it was just, but that's the risk, right? Is that you start losing people that, you know, could have been, you know, they're perfect. They were good for the job, right? Whatever that job is. The other, I think the other thing is too, is, um, and I use restaurant, if you're, you know, I it could be other industries as well. I'm just saying, right. that's just my experience was the, the rib. The, the restaurant industry but what do you think about so what does an owner do to to mitigate like that type of risk to the business right so for example even in our own business we've had um, we've had people that were together we hired them that way mm -hmm. and we lost two employees Two we really to great, that. two yeah. really great employees, yeah. and when you lose them, it's it, you know it's hard on any it's, business. It's one for two, yeah. Right, or it's two hard for on one. Yeah. it's hard on any business when you lose one person. Um, it's increasingly more difficult on a small business when yeah. you lose one yeah, person. Yeah, for sure. And then to lose two is really difficult. And when you care about both of them as people, that's also very difficult because yeah. now you've lost an employee and a and a relationship that you had started to build. Right. So I think it's tough. I, there, I mean, I know there are companies that have rules in place. This, it's hands down not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe that people sneak around, and if they're gonna, if they're gonna do it, they're yeah. still gonna do it. Like, because yeah, it, it's kind of hard to not. Uh, that's always been like, at what point does uh, a, a, an organization um, encroach on something that? It's part of human nature, right? I mean, you're, right. you're going to be attracted to somebody. There's going to be things. And then all of a sudden, um, and I know there's firms that are going to be more strict to be like, hey, we found out you both, we have to both let you go. You know, whether it's a manager, managerial slash subordinate or it's, you know, peer to peer. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, I worked for a large corp, you know, what Fortune 15 company and those things happened. And they never, I think it was more along the lines of like, how do you protect the company so that one, you don't run into a lawsuit around kind of sexual harassment type things, right? right. To where things are get become inappropriate at work. Um, and then it become. I think that's a, probably a higher um, priority for the company to be more focused on than whether those two people, uh, you know, start a relationship together. But to your point, you, you mentioned actually a really great point is that what happens when it goes south? And how, why did it go south? And then does that become something that becomes public and then it becomes a, an issue that HR has to get involved and then, it, and then all of a sudden HR has a bigger issue and they have to let everybody, you know, those people right. go, right? Right. Well, and I think if you talk about, I mean, you go back to Roger Ailes from Fox News. Yeah. We watched that show on him. The and Loudest that was Voice. Yeah. The Loudest Voice. And that yeah. was... Um, one of the f one of the first ones that came out on that Me Too movement that came out was about him and what happened with all of the women and along the lines. And it's, yeah, yeah. it, unfortunately, I mean, and this is it. 
in his case, from the story that was told, I know nothing, like I wasn't yeah. personally involved, I'll yeah. give that disclaimer, but from the story that I saw, um, he used his power to form romantic or intimate relationships with people um, to give them an, a leg up yeah. in the company. Right. Right. You know, and it, it fortunately a lot of it came out. I don't know if everything came out, but but that's where you run into that danger also is that, you know, I mean, I don't I, I don't know if he knew he was doing something wrong or if he thought these women were on board at the time mm -hmm. or what it was. But I think if there's a hard line of you don't do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. it also creates an environment where if if a woman is approached or if a man is approached by somebody who's mm -hmm. above them, um, they can they instead of just saying oh i don't want to do this yeah they, they can, can say they, they reference can, back it, they to reference like a higher what, power yeah, higher yeah, authority. The authority the authority right. of the organization so i think it saves not only in romantic relationships that are that are mutually formed but other ones that we've heard about more in the last few years yeah, um, yeah that's a good point. you know when you have something when you have a higher authority to say oh i can't do that because i signed an agreement saying mm -hmm. i wouldn't get involved how does how does a boss come to you and say, you know, I mean, you just pulled their own, you know, their own documents on them. So how do they come to you and say, well, you can do it this time? You know, what I mean, yeah. it, there's it makes it easier in yeah. that sense, too. Right. So, yeah. It, and it's all about, I think, up front, I mean, which is so important in so many aspects of building a business is like you got to have these things like you got to start thinking about this stuff at the very beginning. Right. And I think a lot of times entrepreneurs and people that are starting companies are like, well, I'm just going to get focused on, and especially to start building a team, uh, you know, they forget that that stuff, I mean, anybody that's been in the corporate world, they scare you to death on all that stuff. Like, it is so serious. Like, I mean, the trainings you have to take, I mean, it is, I mean, they are so risk adverse. They don't want to get sued over something. And they, you know, it, it's a very serious thing for big right. corporations. For whatever reason, on the smaller scale of things, it doesn't get... You know, especially for those folks that have come out of the corporate world and they start their own business, sometimes it gets overlooked um, that these guidelines need to be in place and not overlooked just for the sake of building the business fast, right? Because you, then you can end up with a serious situation where it costs potentially your whole company to go down. Well, I think what early business owners need to keep in mind is that everything you're doing sets a precedence. For sure. Everything you do. Yeah. Like you're not, I mean, it's it, every move. I mean, we make moves now that are, we're setting a precedence for yep. what this is going to look like right. five years from now when we are nation, like coast to coast, you know, you have to have the end in mind. Yes. You know, yeah. what do I want this to look like in five years? I need to do that now. now. Yep. So I, I can't say, well, it's okay now, but when we have 20 employees, that's not going to be okay. Exactly. And exactly. you have to set that stage if that's what, if you are going to set that right. stage. And, you know, we've talked really about kind of the cons of having those intimate or romantic relationships, but oftentimes it can also bring some positive stuff. You know, mm. you, it, we talk a lot about culture and you and I are very big on culture within our company. Um, you can create a very open culture by also not having that hard, fast rule in place. Um, you can have two people who are amazing together, which we, we've interviewed a ton of them because they've co-founded companies together and they're amazing together and what they've built together has been amazing. That can also happen with your employees. Mm -hmm. You know, two people can be way stronger than one, plus they encourage each other at work then. Mm -hmm. You know, if they love the company they work for and they love their job, right. they can, you know, that helps you know, at least then I know. So if I hired a couple, I know at home they're encouraging each other about their job. One person isn't going home discouraged. And usually, oftentimes your spouse will just agree with you. You right. know, you go home and you grumble about work or whatever you're grumbling about. It's not often that your spouse is like, have you thought about it this way? Because they don't want to get smacked across the face. <laughs> what? They're like, I want to just <laughs> vent. and that? Like, let me just <laughs> vent. <laughs> Smack, but man! You took it like that's really far. Like abuse. We're going ex <laughs> we're going extremes today. It's like domestic violence. But I but you know what I mean. But like oftentimes, if you go home and you're venting to your spouse, yeah. you don't want them. I know. Yeah, you don't yeah. want them to interject a different yeah. side. You want them to hear you and listen, and you want to vent. Yes. So what's awesome though is that if you have two people who are working for the same company, that other person can come from a place of, hey, I know our bosses. Are you sure that's what they meant? Right. You know, they can help. So there, there is also a positive side mm -hmm. to it. So, you know, this is our optimizer segment where we, uh, you know, give some guidance, tips, advice 
tactics around how do you develop a better business um, life and so on. So with regards to this particular topic, I always we always like to say that we're not just like a legal disclaimer. Um, you know, we're not attorneys and so on, but I would say the same thing that we are not necessarily HR certified or whatever. But with that said, something that we did early on in our business was we sought HR guidance and advice. We actually hired a firm and we use Bambi. That's the firm we use and they do a really great job. There's a lot of other HR firms out there that for literally for small businesses, um, you can get an HR, uh, somebody that's a, um, uh, HR, you know, kind of a, an account manager per se, but mm -hmm. that they become your HR associate and you can run all these things by them to help understand and help structure your business up front so that as you get ready to hire folks on, whether they're, uh, you know, W2 employees, 1099, whatever the case is, you now have somebody that can guide you when it comes to very specific HR concerns and issues, because by the way, you know, this is very normal in the HR world to, to navigate, right? There's there's guidance that they can provide, there's uh, guidelines that they can, templates, all the things that are needed so that when you do hire folks, those expectations are very clear and um, it provides the structure for you to be able to run a business and not have to worry about these things, um, you know, as, as your business starts to grow. So our recommendation is always seek guidance and advice from somebody that specializes in HR you can hire firms that are very, very, very economical, especially as you're starting out a business. I mean, we've seen firms as low as $99 a month. I mean, to, you know, thousands a month, right? Depends on what you need and how big your business is. But I cannot stress enough how important it is to have that guidance, somebody there that understands HR, um, you know, kind of uh, the guidelines and everything that goes, especially with your state, because things change state by state as well. So you need to have somebody that can guide you that are very state specific so that you're not, you know, um, potentially running and, and growing a business that, can, you know, is at risk right over time. But that's been very helpful for us because we go to our HR partner all the time on all sorts of types of things like this. And they provide a tremendous amount of value and guidance um, that's really helped us kind of streamline our business and extend expectations and the overall framework for how we want to grow as a company. Well, and I think some of it is you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, when you're 100 when you're a new business owner, there's a lot you don't know. Yep. That all of a sudden you come up against, oh, I have to pay taxes on that or I yep. have to do. I mean, regardless of what it is, there's stuff you just don't you know. You don't know. Yeah. And you can't possibly you can't possibly learn it all up front or you'd never start a business. Mm -hmm. So it outsourcing is huge on stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. So, no, this is a good topic. I think it's a. Uh, you know, I think there are hard, fast rules that need to be always in place, especially to avoid harassment or any type of those type of things. And then there's there's probably some leeway in some of the other things because, to your point, we, we've said this before, how many times people do meet at work and mm -hmm. you kind of can't and, – and, and they stay at the same job. Right. And, and the managers know and everybody knows. Like, So it's not – you know, so there are there – are, um, some gray areas there that are – you know, it's not a black or white, just – you know, but then those hard black and white rules need to be very, very defined so that you as a company, you know, don't put yourself at risk. Right. So. And I think it's being consistent as an employer and mm -hmm. as a company. For you, sure. it, once you set the rules, just because you have a personal relationship like you and the one of the managers or buddy buddy, you can't let them bend the rules because you're friends. Exactly. You know, I think it's the rules are the rules and you keep them that way. So I think it's important to keep in mind, too, once you when you set those up. You have to follow those regardless of what the situation is. Right, right. Yeah, so, yeah awesome. That's my thought. All and right. I would, I'd love to hear from our audience kind of what you think about this because I think it goes, it can go either way. What are the pros? What are the cons of this? Should it be allowed? Should it not be allowed? So mm -hmm. let us know what you think. Um, and thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time on Co-Founders. <laughs> such a nerd. <laughs> You're such a nerd. All righty. Very cool. good. We did it. We did it. We did it.